Detectives of Reddit, what are some of the creepiest cases you have worked on? My brother, not me. I usually tell this long and dramatic, but here is the quick to the punch version. Schizophrenic woman reported being watched by ghosts from the abandoned funeral home. Turned out when investigating, someone was actually watching the people in her building and keeping crude log books of their coming and goings and left some of them in the place. My brother's theory was that they were almost discovered and fled. Anyways no idea what kind of crime was being planned but that whole thing sounded creepy as duck to me. Ex-insurance investigator here. The most unsettling arson case I worked was at the Masonic Temple in the historic Black Business District in downtown Birmingham Al. This beautiful eight-story Renaissance Revival-style building was constructed in the 1920s, and included a massive marble lobby, and a grand ballroom. It also housed numerous black-owned businesses, like tailors, dressmakers, attorneys, doctors, dentists, the NAACP, etc. etc. After integration and white flight, the businesses closed or moved, resulting in the building becoming vacant, with the exception of the still-functioning masons. Even though the building was heavily secured and guarded by a single security officer, it was still breached by squatters slash crackheads, who managed to cause a fire on the third floor. That's where I came in. My job was to determine the source, cause, and extent of the fire damage. That meant exploring the entire building, which had no electricity because the fire department cut it until it was deemed safe to resume electrical services. The grand ballroom took up the entire second floor, and luckily had no damage so I just admired the exquisite millwork and decor. The third floor housed mostly professional offices, some even contained their original mid-century furniture, in pristine condition. The fourth floor however, became darker. Literally darker. I used a flashlight to advance down the gloomy hallways, and inspect every room. I found the NAACP office that was literally frozen in time, file cabinets and all. As I was moving down the second hallway my eyes fixated on a large, looming structure in the far corner. I slowly made my way closer, nervous about what I would find. Finally I was close enough to discover a ducking coffin. An old, Dracula-style coffin, standing up at the end of the hall. I didn't dare touch it. As I ascended the building, alone, each floor proved darker and gloomier than the one before, even though each floor had the same amount of windows. And the further up I moved the more ducking coffins I found. In the middle of offices, in closets, blocking doors from the inside. It made no sense, until I got to the top floor. There, I found only two businesses. A coffin company, and the Order of the Eastern Star. I had an overwhelming feeling that I absolutely should not be there, especially not snooping around the O's Lodge. I snapped a few pics, then bolted down the hall and hit the stairwell to the lobby. The only area I hadn't inspected was the basement, and I wasn't sure my nerves were up to it. I discovered a full fallout shelter down there, hundreds of drums of community shelter supplies. Water, food, medical supplies, radiation detectors, everything. The whole building was a massive time capsule, and I felt like I went back in time just being there. That was definitely my most interesting and spooky investigation. This happened when I was a newer cop on patrol, long before I became a detective. I was working midnights in a neighborhood with a high violent crime rate, and we got sent to a dispute at a bar. This wasn't just any bar, we always referred to it as the Star Wars Cantina because it was always a shit show. I was working with a female that night. We make our way through the bar systematically booting people out, and get to the bathrooms. I open the door to the men's room and it's empty, single stall bathrooms. My female partner goes to open the women's bathroom door but it's locked. She knocks on the door and a female says, I'll be out in a minute. We advise her that the bar is closing, bars close at 4 a.m. in NY. After a couple of minutes we begin to grow impatient. Female partner knocks on the door again and the female agrees to open the door. When she comes out, we ask her what took so long. She's not providing any substance in her answers. She's wearing tight yoga pants, and we notice that she has a large bulge in the back of her pants slash crotch. We believed she was either doing drugs in the bathroom and shoved the rest in her pants or that it was a weapon. When we question her about it, she's very evasive and won't answer us. Female partner begins to search her. As she pulls back the female's pants and shines her flashlight down to look, my partner says, duck. She sees a baby arm sticking out from the female's vagina and up through her ass cheeks. This chick had been drinking and smoking crack all day. She had a stillborn and continued to stay at the bar and drink slash smoke crack. When the ambulance arrived, 
They went back into the bathroom with the female and pulled the rest of the baby out of the female and into the toilet bowl. The baby was completely formed, except it never formed a head. It was just sunk in and around the neck. I've seen some crazy shit in my career like brutal homicides etc but that one always stands out the most. Detective here. Had a sexual assault job few years back, woman went to a fancy dress party, attacked on her way home. Doing inquiries on the street we luck out, find this neighbor with CCTV, captures the guy jumping her and dragging her into a front lawn. She was wearing a little red riding hood costume, so she was easy to spot. She'd been drinking, couldn't remember how she got home. Checking possible routes we find a rundown housing complex nearby and found more CCTV of her stumbling home alone. Hood up, headphones in, she's oblivious when he suddenly appears from the shadows behind her, watching her, hiding behind corners, then following her again. He keeps getting to within touching distance of her and then backing off. Perp has a black furry hooded coat up over his head, it's completely covered head to toe, looks like a wolf. Whole thing very surreal. Anyway that wasn't the creepiest thing, we managed to trace her back to a well-known fast food place a few blocks away. Turns out Wolfman was in there for over two hours before she walked in, loitering in the queues, bailing out at the last minute, standing in the corner watching girls come in. Guy was waiting for his perfect target. Bet he didn't believe his luck. Some of the creepiest footage I've ever seen was of when she walks in. Restaurant had HD footage. I'm not shitting you, he was licking his lips, didn't take his eyes off her once. Followed her out. The rest we already knew. Not a detective but I know a creepy case. A friend of mine grew up in a big family house with her immediate family plus an uncle and grandparents. Sometimes her and her brother would wake up with things written on their faces. Just random phrases nothing too shocking. The kids were about 8 or 9 years old, they both denied doing it and no one looked any further into it. Anyway eventually the uncle is killed in his bed, stabbed to death. The police investigate and it turns out there's a dude living in their roof. My boyfriend was the detective in this case. An officer doing a wellness check on an elderly woman and spoke with her son. He said she was out at the moment, but she was doing well. He spoke in detail about what she was up to lately and all that. The officer noticed a strong smell coming from the yard though. I'm sure you see where this is going, as I don't think pretending a deceased relative alive to keep receiving their benefits is uncommon. The officer turned the case over to a detective, my boyfriend, who returned with a warrant. There were two houses. A main house, and a small apartment-style house in the backyard where the mother once lived. When they entered, the son seemed calm. Showed them right to the mother. Continued to speak as if she was still alive and well. In the bed, they found the body, that had clearly been there for a long time. It was like a putrid puddle. The stench was unbearable. The son adamantly refused that she was dead. Insisting she had just been up and around the main house yesterday. I learned this story about from my boyfriend as an explanation as to why he always uses so much cologne, air fresheners, scented fabric softeners, etc. The smell is apparently something you never forget. I used to work with a retired LAPD beat cop of 30 years in his retirement fund money gig working on an ambulance. He told me this story that sent chills down my spine. He pulls over this sedan for expired tags, and neither the driver or passenger has any paperwork driving illegally and they're both acting shady as duck, so he calls for backup, detains them, and searches the car. He finds two dead young teenage girls in the trunk. They're naked, bound, and gagged and had been mutilated, and there was tons of devices obviously meant for torture. He calls in the homicide detectives, and the cavalry comes, the two guys are hauled away to jail, and his day wraps up after all the normal procedures and paperwork has been filed. And he says that was the last he ever heard of that case. Nothing. No subpoenas. No testimony to a grand jury. No interviews for the homicide detectives. No stories in the paper. Nothing. Not a detective but my uncle was a cop. Essentially they got a call to a house, the neighbors had called the police and told them there was a strong odor coming from the apartment next door. They got a little worried as this was an older woman, who only really left her home for essentials. They knocked on her door and she wouldn't answer. Police get there after knocking for a while they don't get an answer. So they had the landlord unlock her door. They weren't necessarily thinking that she was dead. They get inside, and the odor is just awful it smelled like burned hair and cooked meat. 
The woman was taking a shower and she went to adjust the heat to be more hot. She slipped and fell on the floor of the bath. And hit her head on the tap, somehow in the fall she managed to turn the heat tap way too much. Essentially, she passed out. And then died from brain hemorrhaging and then the hot shower boiled her. The hot water was running on her for about a day and a half.